10, 20 years ago. You would be surprised at what they wanted to do. Is like trying whatever, it's a cigarette. Got out in the later stage. transmission and prevention, uh, which can uh, manifest in the oral cavity. He is a dentist trained in El Salvador, where he's also practiced uh, down there for two years before moving to the United States. And he currently has two clinics in the central Arkansas region. So let's give him a big warm hand. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, we are going to talk this afternoon, uh, besides talking about HIV, we're going to talk also a little bit about uh, the consequences of the use of tobacco in the oral cavity also. So um, we're gonna try to you know, uh, talk about both subjects, uh, uh, one right after the other. Um, what we're gonna talk about is, at the beginning, what is HIV? How are the forms that it's transmitted? Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit of the statistics. Uh, we're gonna talk about the oral lesions that we can find in the patients with HIV. Uh, then we're gonna move on to talk a little bit about uh, tobacco use, a little bit of the statistics, and also we're gonna talk about the oral lesions caused by tobacco. And then at the end, we're gonna talk a little bit about the role of uh, oral healthcare providers in uh, helping these patients. Uh, HIV, as uh, maybe everybody knows, stands for human immunodeficiency virus. Uh, pretty much it's a virus that attacks our immune system and uh, it prevents our body to, from reacting and from fighting disease. Uh, a little bit of signs and symptoms. Initially, the patient may present some fever, some sore throat, headaches, or maybe a skin rash. Uh, some people may develop some inflamed lymph nodes. Uh, and in general, you know, the person's gonna show symptoms like, a, like the flu or a cold or, any, or something you know, similar to that. Uh, this may happen weeks or months after, you know, the person gets infected. Uh, it, could, it could take longer than that, too. That's the initial symptoms. Uh, years later, uh, the person, you know, if the person doesn't know that they are infected, you know, because they you know, maybe never, you know, they got a cold or something like that, and then they thought, well, it was just a cold, and then they never get tested. Uh, then, uh, you know, they can still present some swollen lymph nodes, some diarrhea may start, a person may start to lose weight unintentionally, uh, may start feeling, feeling tired, uh, may develop you know, fever. And uh, they might not really know what's wrong with them, but they just, in general, they just feel sick. Um, on the later stage, when the HIV already progresses to what we know as AIDS, uh, the, pa the patient is gonna be really, really sick. Probably having some night sweats, uh, persistent fever over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's actually when the, that patient is probably gonna start presenting some lesions in the mouth. Uh, patient's gonna be tired all the time, may experience some blurred vision, and uh, con the diarrhea, weight loss, and shortness of breath continues. Uh, this is a person that's you know, really sick, and by that time, usually, probably, with, will, will already be diagnosed. Uh, hopefully, and, and, uh, and, but that's really when, uh, what, what I want to tell you about this is that that's when really lesions of the mouth can manifest because what happens is in these persons that are in the later stage, 
uh, that's when uh, their immune system is really compromised and that's when uh, opportunistic infections can appear. Uh, modes of transmission of, of HIV, first we're going to talk about myths, you know, that it's transmitted, you know, by hugging a person who is HIV positive, uh, kissing a person or with a mosquito bite, those are myths, you know, people, you know, talk about things like that, but uh, that's really not true. The reality is that the, the, the HIV, the virus can be found in some body fluids. <coughs> Uh, like vaginal secretions, the breast milk of an infected mother, uh, semen, blood, and uh, blood containing fluids. Uh, I put a little asterisk there. Uh, even though uh, a person, it's, it, it's, it, the virus has not been isolated in saliva, uh, but uh, if a person has a oral lesions that are bleeding, there's going to be blood in the mouth. So you still have to, I guess, have a little bit of precaution there. Although, and, and I'm, uh, scientifically it has not been proven that it can be transmitted, you know, with saliva. But if saliva has also blood and the virus can be found in blood, then you have to wonder what, you know, there's really no evidence that that can happen, but I think a caution is, is, is in order. Um, how is it transmitted? Uh, primarily, HIV is a sexually transmitted disease, uh, more, more than likely by not using a condom during sexual relations. Uh, some, type of, some types of sex activities are more likely to be more risky, like anal, anal sex uh, without a condom is, has a higher risk of transmitting the disease than uh, normal vaginal sex. Also, unprotected oral sex can also be a risk. Uh, the other way that it can be transmitted is by drug use, uh, by sharing needles uh, or syringes uh, or any other equipment that's used, you know, to prepare illicit drugs for injection. Uh, the other way that, that HIV can be transmitted is by being born to an infected mother. Uh, and this can be either during the pregnancy uh, or uh, during childbirth while the child is passing through the birth canal or after birth if uh, that mother, for some reason, doesn't know that she's HIV positive and she's breastfeeding her infant, uh, she can transmit the virus to the infant uh, through the breast milk. Uh, this is a map just showing a little bit of distribution of uh, uh, the infection of HIV. You know, what are the places where it's found more predominantly in the United States? Um, the deep blue is the, where there's more cases. Uh, here in Arkansas, we are in purple there, so we are right in between there in the average, pretty much. And those uh, in Arkansas, this, uh, this is an old statistic too. I couldn't find a chart with a newer statistic, but uh, it's, uh, it says 202.5 to 319.3 persons per every 100,000 people, you know, in the population. Uh, this one shows, uh, you know, how it's distributed in, uh, you know, in metropolitan, non-metropolitan areas and according to the race also. Uh, this one's more specific to Arkansas. Uh, the majority of the cases is, uh, you see that 54.7% is what is known as men having sex with other men. So uh, that's the highest percentage of a population that's infected with HIV. And then the second largest here in Arkansas is heterosexual people, you know, with uh, different sex partners. 
Uh, this is according to race here in Arkansas. Majority is going to be white, uh, closely followed by African American. Uh, now that we talked a little bit about what HIV is and how it can be transmitted and things like that, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the mouth and how it affects the mouth. Um, there's different kinds of lesions that uh, can be caused by HIV. Uh, the first kind is what we call fungal lesions, which is lesions or, uh, that are caused by uh, fungus, uh, fungal agents. Uh, we're also going to talk about lesions caused by viruses, by other viruses other than the HIV. Some lesions caused by bacteria. Some uh, neoplastic lesions, which is, uh, you know, cancer pretty much. And uh, there's another classification there that says other lesions, which is lesions that are, cannot be put in a specific category. They just put them all together there. This is a classification uh, made by, the, by UCSF, University of California in San Francisco. Uh, the first one, first we're going to talk about uh, the fungal lesions. Uh, the first kind is something called pseudomembranous candida, which is a fungus. Uh, it's uh, very closely related to falling CD4 and T cell counts. Uh, which, is, which are cells that are very important in our immune system. Uh, when this type of bacteria, is not, I'm sorry, but not bacteria, this type of fungal infection usually does not appear on, a, on the regular, you know, normal population. It's, it's an opportunistic, what we call an opportunistic uh, agent, and it will, it, it will show up on somebody who has a very, very depressed uh, immune system. Another form of candida can be something called erythematous candida, which is some red, reddish, it doesn't show there very well, but it's some reddish uh, uh, lesions, in, in, in this case, in the roof of the mouth. Something else that can happen is something called angular chelitis, which is uh, an, uh, some uh, lesions in the corners of the mouth. Uh, that can be present also in people who have, uh, you know, dry lips and things like that. So that's not something that's really uh, specific to HIV, but uh, but uh, it, it's it's more prevalent on people who are who are HIV positive. Histoplasmosis. This is uh, another kind of, of fungal infection. Uh, you see that, that lesion in the floor of the mouth there? Uh, this is a fungus that uh, can be found in bird and bat droppings. Uh, it's, uh, in, in Arkansas, it's actually pretty prevalent. Uh, also in areas of uh, Tennessee, Missouri, in, in this the area that's the darkest area in the map there. Uh, this is a fungus that, like I said, it can be found. It can be isolated from uh, the droppings of bats and birds. But, you know, so the spores can travel in, in the air, and we probably may have inhaled it, and, uh, but it doesn't cause any disease on a person who has a normal responding, you know, immune system. But on a person who has a very depressed immune system, it can cause lesions, and usually, if it's causing a lesion in the mouth, it probably that person has already inhaled it, and it's causing problems in their lungs too. Something else uh, is called uh, cryptococcosis, which is another fungus. Uh, also, you know, uh, same thing. Probably, person who has lesions in the mouth, it probably already has. Uh, lesions in the lungs because they probably already inhaled those those spores of that fungus and they are you know just uh, by having a poor response responding immune system uh, they develop these lesions our you know body will not be able to fight uh, these organisms uh, so that was uh, the fungal lesions uh, we're going to talk a little bit about lesions 
caused by, by other viruses. Uh, this is this uh, this particular one herpes. Herpes is not something that is exclusive of HIV. This uh, can happen in anybody. Uh, however, uh, in HIV patients, uh, it's it's also known as a cold sore. So if somebody has a cold sore, don't be thinking, oh, this person probably HIV. No, 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 uh, definitely not. Uh, but uh, they can happen probably more often in people with a depressed immune system. Uh, there's uh, something else called, you know, herpes zoster, which is shingles, uh, which is pretty much the same virus. It just uh, manifests, you know, in a more systemic uh, form than the localized form of the herpes. Uh, there's uh, the human papilloma virus, uh, which is, you know, the short is HPV virus. Uh, it, it can be also, it can cause also lesions in the mouth. Uh, usually, uh, the lesions are, you know, very delineated, so they are not, you know, like... Uh, you don't know exactly where the, the margins of the lesion are. They are very circumscribed, and, and you can tell by uh, looking at it sometimes that you can do a very pretty good diagnosis. But to treat them, probably need to do surgical, uh, remo surgically removed, but sometimes the recurrence uh, is very high. Uh, the, the HPV virus, can cause cancer too, can degenerate in cancer. It's the same virus that, uh, you know, can cause cervical cancer in, in, in women too. So uh, it can cause cancer in the mouth too. Uh, this is something called cytomegalovirus. Usually when we see this type of lesion in the mouth, uh, also, there's going to be already systemic, systemic problems. The virus is going to be spread all over. And, and, and uh, when we notice in the mouth, it's, it's a sign that that, uh, that person, pretty much a diagnosis of, of uh, cytomegalovirus is pretty similar. It's, you can almost certainly say that uh, that, that person is, 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 you know, is HIV positive. Uh, there's something else called uh, hairy leukoplakia. Uh, there's two different kinds of leukoplakia. Uh, the regular leukoplakia and this one that's called hairy leukoplakia. This one is very closely re associated with HIV. Uh, there's another kind of leukoplakia that we can find in smokers, uh, which I'll talk about in a little bit too. Uh, these are white patches that, in this case, it shows the, the, the tongue, but it can be in other parts of the mouth. And, and this is called by a virus, also called Epstein-Barr virus. Also can cause this virus in, in, in people cause what we call mononucleosis, or mono, as most people know it. Uh, but mono doesn't mean that that person is HIV, it's just that the, the virus can cause that disease also. Uh, but the virus can cause those lesions in the mouth. Um, well, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, lesions caused by bacteria. Uh, first, let's talk about uh, something that used to be known as HIV gingivitis. Uh, it's not really a, a good way to name it. Uh, the actual name is linear gingival erythema, which is uh, the characteristic is that the gums, the, what we call the, mar the marginal gum, gingiva, which is the gums that are right around the teeth, they look very reddish. They just look, you know, angry and bleed very easily. And, uh, and uh, the particular thing about this is that uh, gingivitis can be present in a, in a person who, who is not HIV positive, of course, but the, usually 
it's a, a person who has a plaque in their teeth or buildup. And, and the particular thing about this is that usually this can be seen in a person with HIV positive, but they have really good oral hygiene. So there's no plaque associated with this type of inflammation. Uh, so that's, that's the particular thing about it, that even though the patient is, uh, has good oral, oral care, they can still develop you know, gingiv gingivitis. And that's because uh, we, the same thing, you know, they, the oral flora in the mouth is, is out of control because, uh, because of the disease. And then but normal bacteria can cause you know, disease that normally would, would be on, on check. Uh, periodontitis is, uh, uh, and more specifically, necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis is uh, a, an inflammation of the periodontum, which is all the, the support that teeth have. You know, our teeth have roots, and those roots are inside bone. And what we call periodontum is that bone, the ligament around the bone and the roots and the gums and all that. That's what we call periodontum. So the periodontitis is an inflammation of all those, that, that mechanism of support for the teeth. And uh, uh, this uh, is present on people who do have plaque, but uh, it just, it spreads very, very fast. You know, there's a lot of accumulation of buildup, as you can see, and then the gums just recede and just uh, doesn't look very good. Uh, another one is something called vascular angiomatosis. Uh, it's called by, again, some bacteria that we normally have in the mouth, but, uh, you know, when a person is probably HIV, probably AIDS, uh, in an AIDS stage, then they can develop these type of lesions. Usually the diagnosis is, has to be with uh, culture of the, of, the, of the lesion. You cannot do just by looking at it, say this is what this is. But if, if it's a confirmed diagnosis of this type of disease, then according to CDC guidelines, then um, a person who is diagnosed with this, we can pretty much say that they are on the eighth stage of, of HIV infection. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about lesions uh, called neoplastic lesions. Uh, one of them is something we call Kaposi sarcoma, which is a cancer. Uh, this type of cancer is, called, is uh, overgrowth of uh, blood vessel tissue. So it's, you know, pretty much what you see there, that's, you know, blood vessel tissue, ar arteries, veins, and blood. Uh, when these type of lesions, which cannot be pressed, which are not present exclusively in the mouth, they can be present in the skin, outside, you know, everywhere. But when they are present in the mouth, the, usually the, the, the rate of the likelihood that that person is going to die from those is, is higher than if it's present in the skin. Uh, another type of, of uh, neoplastic lesion, it's another type of cancer, is uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, lymph is, uh, you know, tissue that it's all around our body. That's where, you know, our lymph nodes or nodules uh, are part of that. Uh, and uh, those can, you know, th that tissue can also cause, can degenerate and, and turn into cancer. Um, now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the other lesions that cannot be categorized in any of the other, in any of the other. First is something called the aftos ulcer. Uh, this is also known as a canker sore. Uh, this is not, again, this is not something that's present exclusively on people with HIV, but uh, they are more prone to developing these kind of lesions. Uh, pretty much this, this it, it's not known exactly. We still don't know exactly what causes these lesions, but uh, they have been related to, to autoimmune response, and uh, they 
there's some studies say that can be present more in women than men and usually they show up in when, the, uh, when a female is during their menstrual period. Usually, we you know, stages when uh, we are sick or the person is weak, it can develop these type of lesions, uh, especially if there's some trauma to the, to the, to the tissue. Uh, say somebody bites on something sharp or a chip or something, and then it can cause, you know, an ulcer, and then it can form what we call an aftos ulcer, which uh, are very characteristic. They are almost round sometimes, and uh, they have a whitish, yellowish, uh, center and the margins are usually like a reddish margin and they are pretty painful. Uh, something else that uh, can happen is something called thrombocytopenic purpura. Uh, the immune system attacks the thrombocytes which are some cells that are involved in clotting, in blood clotting and what this is is just a spontaneous bleeding in some areas. Uh, because the, the thrombocytes are attacked by the, by the immune system and then, you know, person just bleeds very easily. Uh, there's uh, something else. Uh, it can, the immune system can also attack our salivary glands, uh, which is the glands that produce saliva in their mouth. Uh, ad, they get blocked, sometimes causing inflammation because the saliva cannot be cannot come out into the mouth and uh, at the same time if they are blocked or they sometimes they don't need to get inflamed they are just stop producing saliva and they can cause something called a serostomia which is also known as a dry mouth and uh, when a person has a dry mouth then uh, caries can run rampant because uh, our saliva uh, is just a natural <coughs> cleansing agent in our mouth. You know, it just helps cleanse, you know, any food residues that we have in the mouth. And uh, also, uh, at the same time, a dry mouth can uh, allow certain types of bacteria to, which are called anaerobic bacteria, to thrive in that uh, drier environment and cause decay. And uh, you know, very that type of decay you just saw in that, ex that, that photograph is very characteristic in that it's right around the edges of the, of the teeth, where the teeth meet the gum. That's usually when, when, where it causes that type of, of, of lesion. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit, but uh, it, that can be present also in, in tobacco in smoker, in tobacco users, specifically smokers, because uh, uh, also, they tend to have a dry mouth. Uh, I'm going to talk now. Uh, I'm going a little fast because of time, so I'm sorry if I'm going a little bit too fast. And moving too fast. I think I think uh, you don't want to see those things too, for no. too long, anyways, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to move on and talk a little bit about tobacco. Uh, when I was researching a little bit more about for this presentation, um, I was surprised. I didn't know there were at, at least a dozen forms of tobacco that were, you know, that companies have to deliver, you know, to sell tobacco to in America. There's at least twelve. There might be more, but these are the most common ways. I'm sure people find other ways to use it too, but these are the the main forms of, of tobacco use. Um, First, let's talk about something, it's called vitis. What these are, these are little, small, hand-rolled uh, cigarettes. They are usually not, they are not fabricated in the United States. They are important, imported uh, from India and some parts of South, Southeast Asia. Uh, these have no filter and the content of uh, nicotine, tar, and carbon monoxide are much higher than regular cigarettes, which means they can be even more addictive and can cause more problems as far as health risks. Um, they are tobacco, which is hand-rolled in around some leaves from a plant that's native to, to Asia. Um, 
Then we're gonna talk a little bit about cigarettes. There's over 4,000 chemicals that have been isolated in cigarettes and cigarette smoke. Uh, at least 60 of them are known carcinogens, which means that are known chemicals that FDA, CDC have identified as causing cancer. Um, so that right there is, you know, enough to to say what what we're putting in our body when we're sm when when somebody smokes. Uh, cigars, uh, cigars is you know the what the difference is pretty much these are the tobacco plant leaves are dried or or air cured it's called too and. They're usually just one type of tobacco plant, and they are rolled together, and that what, that's what forms the, tobacco, the, the cigar. Uh, also, the content of nicotine, tar, uh, is higher in cigars than regular cigarettes. Uh, and, uh, and, the, and for that reason, you know, they can be more addictive. Because the nicotine, which is uh, the agent that causes the addiction in, in, in tobacco is higher in, in, in cigars. Um, I forgot to say when I, uh, that uh, tobacco, you know, well, we'll talk about what health problems, but besides what we know as far as uh, uh, it, it causing, you know, cancer, lung cancer and things like that, and uh, all the things that we're going to talk about, it has also been uh, associated with uh, high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, and, and also with uh, erectile dysfunction in men. Cigars? Uh, uh, tobacco in general, smoking tobacco. Uh, now the tobacco companies have uh, come out with something new. Uh, this is uh, pretty new. Uh, you, you see uh, uh, this is called dissolvable tobacco. Uh, you see that first one over there? Doesn't that look like that beef jerky? <laughs> it looks like it, right? And this one, the one that says strips, they are really strips like those uh, breath strips that they have. And uh, they also have those other ones called orbs in the center there that it looks almost like, a, like candy or, or like a mint. Uh, this is tobacco that's finely processed and it's and, uh, and they use food grade binders to hold it together so that people can put this in their mouth and actually they don't have, they, it's called smokeless and spitless. So they don't even have to spit it. They just dissolves in their mouth and they can eat it. So this is something pretty new. And there's, there's really no studies yet, yet as to what health consequences it can have. Uh, but uh, it's out there, and uh, you know they just keep finding new ways of uh, trying to get people to use tobacco. Uh, even though, like I said, there's no health risks that have been identified, you know, but the tobacco content and the nicotine uh, makes it no safer than than the other forms of tobacco because it will also be addictive because it has nicotine on it in it. Uh, something pretty new also is uh, something called the electronic cigarette or the e-cigarettes. Uh, this is not a strictly a tobacco product because there's no tobacco used, but uh, pretty much what it is, it's an electronic cigarette. It's a nicotine delivery system. Uh, it's got, uh, you know, it can be recharged and it has a cartridge that they change and the cartridge, with some, you know, the, the, the part on the right, uh, it has nicotine in it, and the person, you know, inhales it, and they, they can, you know, if, I guess it feels like a regular cigarette, uh, but it doesn't have tobacco, like I said, but there's still uh, a lot of carcinogens that have, have been identified in, 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 in the, when a person uses it. Uh, they have been marketed as a, aid to stop smoking, but there's really no proof of that uh, because, it, like I said, it's a nicotine delivery device, it, and the nicotine is what makes tobacco addictive. So even though there's a strictly no tobacco, but there's, you know, chemicals and nicotine in it. Um, then uh, there's also something called hookah, 
which uh, I guess a, a lot of you may, may have uh, heard or seen it. Uh, pretty much what this is, is, uh, is it's a pipe. Uh, usually the tobacco is mixed with some type of fruit to give it a flavor. Uh, and there's uh, hookah bars where pe people go in and they have uh, hookah sessions. Uh, a study has shown that a typical one hour session at a hookah bar, a person inhales more, more smoke than smoking one single cigarette. So um, besides that, uh, usually the the tobacco is placed on the top, uh, mixed, like I said, with, with some type of fruit. And then there's a plate where usually the tobacco is heated with charcoal. Uh, so the charcoal itself is emitting you know, smoke also as it's, as it's burning. And then the, the, the smoke from the bowl where the tobacco and the, and the, uh, is mixed, it's, they actually call it shisha, that, that Tobaccos mixed with fruit, and uh, and it goes down that pipe, and, and then it's filtered through water, and then the person smoke. They, there's a mouthpiece then that people put a put in their mouth, and they smoke that. Uh, besides all the tar, the carbon monoxide, the nicotine, then there's the all the other chemicals that are released by the, by heating up by the charcoal. And uh, besides, it's common practice between hookah users to share the mouthpiece. So that in itself also carries other risks of infection from oral disease, because they, it's like sharing a, the toothbrush pretty much. Um, there's also another kind of cigarette that's important and uh, more uh, commonly from Indonesia. They're called critics or cloth cigars uh, cl or cloth cigarettes, which is tobacco mixed with cloves and that gives it, you know, a different flavor. And, uh, and um, also like the first ones we mentioned, like the bitties that are imported, these have a very, very high content of all those chemicals that are known carcinogenics. We have pipes which consists pretty much of a bowl where people put the tobacco and they lit it, they, they, you know, they lit the, the, the tobacco and then they have a stem and a mouthpiece. Uh, besides everything that we talked about, uh, that uh, it also the, the use of pipes can cause more problems in the mouth as far as causing trauma to the teeth because that, that mouthpiece can cause trauma to the teeth. And... Uh, in the 16th century, it was very, very common practice to use pipes, uh, and uh, and um, uh, they used what they call a clay mouthpiece, and that was very abrasive to the teeth. Uh, this is a this is a, a man from the 16th century here in Maryland, United States, and you see that hole there, right there. In, in, in that's where from holding the pipe in that same spot all the time. Now we're going to talk a little bit about what, uh, what's called smokeless tobacco. Uh, then there's different kinds uh, of smokeless tobacco. First is uh, what they call dipping tobacco, uh, which is pretty much a person gets dips into the, the <laughs> container and gets a lump of that tobacco and puts it in the mouth and, and they either Usually, this kind of tobacco, they just put it in the mouth and just hold it there. Uh, it's somewhat finely processed with other additives, so it's kind of moist. Uh, what they know as chewing tobacco is, uh, is more loosely packed, and uh, the person has to actually chew on it to release the nicotine and, uh, and uh, you know, get that nicotine high. Uh, so this one, they actually have to chew on it. Uh, not very common here is something called snuff. 
uh, in which this is very, very finely ground. It's almost like a powder. It, it is a powder pretty much, and people pretty much what they do is they put it in their nose and they sniff it. And, uh, and uh, it's, it's, uh, this is banned in, in Europe, by the way. They produce it and they sell it to America, but they don't, they don't use it over there. <laughs> uh, they also have something called snus. What, that, what this is, is pretty much the tobacco. It's packed in small packs of, uh, that look like tea bags. So if the person doesn't want to get their hands dirty with the tobacco, I guess they just grab one of these and still put it under their lip and in between the lip and the, and, the, and the gums and they just keep hold it in there and that's, you know, the tobacco releases slowly. And, uh, and uh, that's what they do. Um, all these forms of, of uh, smokeless tobacco, you know, still, they, even though there's no smoke, which the smoke in itself has a lot of uh, problems, but uh, the smokeless tobacco is not safer either. There's still the nicotine, the, 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 the addiction that it can cause is still present, and uh, there's re it's really not safer. The smokeless tobacco can actually uh, cause a lot of damage in, in the mouth also, besides causing all the other problems in, 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 you know, in, in, our, in our body. Uh, a little bit of a statistics about tobacco, and th this is a fact that it's posted on the CDC uh, website. Tobacco use in the United States is the leading cause of deaths, leading cause of preventable deaths. So there is no single other agent or other thing that kills more people in America that can be prevented than tobacco. Uh, there's a list of preventable causes of death. Uh, even HIV, which probably would be under sexually transmitted or infectious disease, is way down there compared to tobacco. That's how many people die from the tobacco or tobacco-related products. Cigarette smoking causes about one of every five deaths in the United States each year. So that's 20% of people who die in America die from tobacco-related uh, health problems. Uh, about, uh, so that's about almost half a million people, including people that die from secondhand smoke. Uh, which is about 50,000 people who die from secondhand smoke each year. And uh, the total, like I said, it says about 443, it's split about 269,000 men and 173,000 women. It used to be a much higher difference between men and women. Uh, but lately, uh, women are catching up, which is not a good thing <laughs> to catch up with. Um, also, cigarette use causes premature, de premature death. On average, adults who smoke cigarettes die about 14 years earlier than their peers who don't smoke. Uh, and based on the current cigarette use in America, there's a, about 25 million Americans, including 5 million that right now are under age 18 that will die prematurely. Now we're going to talk a little bit about what happens in the mouth when somebody uses tobacco products. Uh, this is a list of things, so I'm going to go through them uh, rather quickly. First of all, smoking causes bad breath. Uh, the reason for this is that when uh, somebody smokes, they, like I said, they usually will, their mouth will dry out. And that causes bacteria in their mouth to die. And then bacteria, when, when bacteria dies inside your mouth, then that usually gives out bad breath. Besides that, uh, that smoke, the smoke particles, can remain in your mouth and your lungs for a long period of time, even after somebody finishes smoking one cigarette. So that smell 
from the smoke of the cigarette will linger inside the lungs and come out through the mouth. It can cause tooth discoloration uh, because of the same reason. Bacteria die and then uh, the, the tar accumulates and the nicotine accumulates around the teeth and that causes the pigmentation and, and the discoloration of the teeth. Uh, smoking can also cause something called nicotinic stomatitis. It's also known as smoker's palate. Uh, pretty much the roof of the mouth, we have some very small glands that uh, where saliva <coughs> comes out and those can be, get really inflamed. Sometimes this can look a lot more, a lot darker and pigmented, almost like a black palette. And this is more common in people who smoke <coughs> pipes because when they smoke a pipe, uh, the, the mouthpiece is usually very thin and the smoke, as it goes in, it just hits that area of the mouth, you know. Uh, it, it's not distributed more evenly in the mouth like a normal cigarette would, probably. So that's, uh, that's what's called uh, smoker's palate. It can cause gum problems and uh, periodontal disease, gum disease. Uh, Somebody, even somebody who has good oral hygiene is going to be more prone to having gum disease than somebody who's not, who's not a smoker. Uh, it will also cause tartar buildup. Uh, the nicotine forms a film around the teeth, which is, it's a rough area, not smooth, not a smooth area. In, in, Bacteria and plaque can adhere in time to that film and then can cause buildup to form more easily. Uh, it can also cause uh, bone loss around, around the teeth and uh, it can eventually lead to tooth loss. It can uh, also cause something called leuco leucoplakia, like we talked about, which is like a leathery patch, white tissue. Uh, this is very common on, on people who use that smokeless tobacco and they put that tobacco in, in the mouth. It can, that chronic in, inflammation of the tissue causes it to get thicker and, and, and have that pigmentation. Uh, that, uh, that disappears usually in this type of leukoplakia when uh, somebody stops the, stops the source of the inflammation, in this case the, to, the use of tobacco. It can also cause delayed healing whenever somebody has any dental procedure, uh, especially when somebody has a tooth extraction and then smokes afterwards. And within the, the first of 24 to 48 hours after having an extraction, it can cause something called a dry socket. Very painful. More painful than uh, any toothache that anybody may have had. Okay. Uh, also, uh, not just in the lungs, but we, the, in, also in the mouth can develop cancer due to the use of tobacco products. Like we said, there's over 60, 60 cancer agents in, in, the, in, in smoke and in, in tobacco. Uh, smokeless tobacco uh, also has their risks. Like I said, it's not safer than than uh, regular tobacco. Uh, and uh, besides, like I said, besides the other problems, it can also cause abra abrasion of the teeth and the gums because they put that right against the tissue. Uh, what's our role as, as, a, as a healthcare providers or our oral healthcare providers? First is uh, educate uh, our patients and educate in, in settings like this educate people about, about the risks of both <coughs> HIV and tobacco. Uh, also, try, uh, hopefully, by educating, we, we would like to think that we're helping to prevent uh, the use of, of, of tobacco and prevent people <laughs> from having unsafe practices that could lead them to contract HIV. Uh, once we see things in the mouth, we, our role is to observe and document and treat 
as needed if we can treat it and, and if we see something that you know we think uh, that patient needs further you know treatment and we need to refer them also to to another healthcare provider or refer them to having testing done if we suspect that somebody may be HIV positive and they don't might not even know it uh, and then you know if these are you know these are our patients our role is also to to help them maintain a healthy mouth, healthy oral cavity, and, uh, and uh, you know, hopefully help them to have a better quality of life. Um, that's pretty much it. That's all that uh, I had for today, and I uh, thank you very much for your attention. Quickest what? I'm sorry. Which one causes the quickest cancer? Uh, you you mean between smokeless uh, or smoking? Uh, well, usually uh, the smoke, smoking tobacco will usually cause more likely uh, lung cancer, but uh, the chewing can cause oral cancer more easily than causing lung cancer. So there's really no, not, none of them is safer than the other one. You can get cancer from either one of those, either one. You're trading organs. <laughs> um, there's, I've heard this about 30 injections that you can get from smoking now. Can you say a little something about that? Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not very familiar with it. But, uh, what, I mean, what, what have you heard about it? Mm-hmm. And that is basically what I heard about. I don't know what statistics that as to, you know, how bad it affects you, but it's becoming more and more prevalent now. Yeah, probably... Uh, Dr. Wheeler, can you speak to that if you'd like? <coughs> Dr. Wheeler, do you want to speak to that? So the major health issues around prairie band smoke are the irritant effects. Uh, and so this is really a heavy burden on children uh, because they're, you know, next, particularly infants, you know, next to mother's clothes and that kind of thing. But the same smoke that they would get from a cigarette just goes into the clothes and it sits there for a while and then it comes off at a later time. So it has uh, an irritant effect that triggers that. Uh, it dries out the nose and the oral mucosa so that they're more susceptible to viral infections and other things. So, uh, we're learning more and more about third hand smoke, but it is definitely a health issue. Wow. So much so that some professions are saying that if an individual smokes, they can't smoke the day of their shift because of the, the transfer that can happen. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Uh, the cigars, the, you know, some people take like the tobacco out of the cigars or different type of cigars and they in the use like the skin part to roll their one in. Is the skin part just as harmful for you? Do it have the same nicotine as tobacco? Well, uh, sometimes more, right? Well, uh, there's still some tobacco in it because it's pretty much the, you know, now, is there less tobacco because they're taking all the inside out? Yeah, there's less, but, but there's more marijuana. <laughs> there's less tobacco, but there's more marijuana, so I don't know if it's safe. <laughs> here, here, here's my argument on that. Smoking um, marijuana, smoking cigarettes, or a house burning up on the fire, all combustible stuff is going to cause problems with our health, regardless of what it is someone's putting in there. Yeah. So. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, I was wanna, I was wanna know when a uh, female is um, pregnant and they smoke, uh, 
smoking marijuana until they get a baby or side effects. Mm -hmm. or, you know, Maybe Dr. Dr. Wheeler Peter, can answer to that a little bit better. deficit disorders and things like that. There are chromosomal problems that can develop because of the impact of the carcinogens that are in cigarette smoke. There's probably uh, almost as many babies in the United States who uh, are lost because of miscarriage as there are for intentional abortions in the United States because of all the impact of cigarette on the infant. And then the worst thing is that if the baby's born prematurely, which happens more often with cigarette smoking, then uh, they have a higher risk of all kinds of complications from premature delivery, and they have these long-term kind of horrible problems with the lung disease and other things related to being born early. So it is really an important target for us to try to educate young women, not once they're pregnant, but before they get pregnant, that they stop smoking while they're not pregnant, while they have access to all the medical therapies and patches and everything else, because many of those cannot be used during pregnancy. So that's a big, big focus for us. Long answer, sorry. Any more questions? All right, I want to thank um, Dr. King. <laughs> C T B section. That's a long uh, list there. And also uh, Ruthie Johnson. And their presentation is um, Disease of Opportunity that Lurks in the Shadows of Smokers with HIV and present the facts on how tobacco industry targets the LGBT community. So they're micing up. Who wants to take a shot at how many cigarettes are created every year on the planet, manufactured every year? It has lots of zeros after it, I'll tell you that much. A hundred million to a billion. Anybody want to go up or down? Anybody want to go up? Anybody want to go up? Six trillion. And you know they got to target somebody. Okay. 